Hi, this is Randy Rice of Rice Consulting Services and riceconsulting.com with another in my series of basic testing concepts and principles videos. So in this short video, I just kind of want to go over some of the basics of the V diagram or the V model, as maybe you've uh, heard it called. Uh, first thing I'll say is that uh, there's, I don't know how many different versions of the V model out there. And uh, I believe it originated like in the, uh, the early 90s. Uh, and it, I think, was credited to Barry Baim of, uh, of USC. And what it is is really is just a way to explain what goes on in building and testing software. It's not really meant to be a life cycle. It does kind of have a sequential feel to it, but at the same time, you can do the processing steps in the V diagram um, in iterations. You can do them in parallel. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter how you choose to implement it. Uh, the, the basic thing we're getting at in the V model is understanding of what relates to what in terms of deliverables. And so the, the way the V kind of goes, just to unpack it real quickly here, is you start out up in the upper left hand corner with a business need and from that business need a set of requirements are defined even if they're raw requirements or user stories whatever you want to call these uh, it's the expression of this business need um, in such a way that the software shall do this the user must do this kind of thing basically a set of imperatives and business rules that reflect this business need from that, uh, this de defines the what is needed. Then the, the system design is created and how the implementation will occur. So this design should reflect the requirements, which reflects the business need. Uh, it's important to note here, though, that there's no real requirement that every step gets put in place before you can go to the next one. Once again, this is more like relating the work products to testing. And so when we talk about the basis of testing, what we're talking about are many of the things that are created over here on the left-hand side of the V. And then you get to code a step, which is where you're implementing the design, which is a reflection of the requirements, which is a reflection of the business need. Now, you'll notice down here in the lower right-hand corner of the boxes in the V. There's verify business need, verify requirements. These are basically review kind of steps. Uh, you can verify business need, for example, by doing a feasibility study or cost-benefit analysis. In fact, I often tell people that this is probably one of the best defects you can find is the system that shouldn't be built. You know, you can save millions of dollars literally, you know, without even writing a line of code on that one. But you can uh, start to find defects even throughout this uh, part of the V. And I've labeled this verification because that typically what verification is is making a judgment of the correctness of something based on something you've already created in the, in the project itself. It's not an executed thing. It's not a real world thing. It's kind of like making the judgment on a yardstick that you've created. Uh, on the right-hand side of the V, we see the test activities, unit, integration, system, and acceptance test. And you see that they have arrows that point back over to the left-hand side. And the three levels on the bottom, the unit, integration, and system test, and, and please once again understand that my version of the V I'm showing here may differ from one or others that you've seen. Uh, but I have reasons for showing it the way that I do. Uh, these are all verification kind of things. Once again, I'm determining the correctness based on something that I developed in this project. So a system test is verifying requirements. And once again, that's something that we developed based on the business need. We get up to acceptance test, and now we're not validating requirements. We're validating business need. It's a real-world test. It's testing against business processes that are performed in the real world. And you'll see also in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of these boxes, you'll see validate business need, verify requirements, verify design, and verify code. So what goes on over here on the right-hand side is mainly verification with a little validation at the top of 
the acceptance test part of the V. So one other thing we haven't talked about is you'll notice this other arrow going over to from the left to the right talking about planning. There are things that you create on the left hand side of the V early on that can be used for some early planning of the things on the right hand side of the V. Take for example acceptance criteria. Uh, I would suggest that if you're going to start a project and you don't have acceptance criteria defined already, you're already in trouble. So this uh, acceptance criteria defined in the business need could very well be the same acceptance criteria you have in your acceptance planning. The requirements, the base requirements that you have over here developed could be the basis for your initial system test objectives. So you see this kind of two-way interaction going on here. Well, anyway, that's the basic idea of the V model. And if you want to know more information like this about things that are encountered in software testing and uh, some of the basic concepts and principles, as well as some of the more intermediate and advanced topics in testing, come to my website at riceconsulting.com. Thanks for watching.